morning. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you all for being here and welcome to the Palm County Board of Commissioners August 25th, 2015 uh, work session. Uh, we want to recognize our invited guests and uh, elected officials. I uh, saw Mayor Dale, uh in the room. Uh, Mayor Hiram, are there any other elected officials in the room? Okie dokie. Well, thank you all for being here. Uh, remind you to turn off all cell phones, next tells, pagers, anything else that might uh, make a little bit of a racket. Uh, Marshall, you mean? For our invitation and pledge this morning, we have Pastor Clifford McCrady with New Unity Christian Fellowship Church uh, for our invitation and pledge uh, to be present. Seeing him gone, uh, then uh, if y'all will stand, I'll lead us in our prayer and our pledge. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we come today with humble hearts, Lord, asking for your, your forgiveness, Lord, and we want to thank you for all the blessings of life. Thank you for being able to meet freely here. And Lord, all those that are harm's way to make sure that we're safe and able to do this. Lord, we lift them up and you please protect them. Lord, for our public safety and first responders, Lord, we just praise you for them and uh, we honor them here today, Lord. And Lord, we ask for discernment and wisdom in everything that we do. In the holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Pledge. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Minutes, uh, the August 11, 2015 work session minutes, and the August 11, 2015 board meeting minutes are available for your attention. <laughs> Uh, under announcements, uh, have anybody here with the Sheriff's Department? Okay. Uh, we are going to announce that the Lamar Hunting 12th Annual Memorial Ride uh, is hosted by Gary Gullich and it benefits the Georgia Sheriff Youth Homes uh, Saturday, September the 19th, 2015. Registration begins at 8.30 at the Pauline Senior Center. Uh, they say kickstands up at 10 o'clock. Uh, $35 per bike and $15 per passenger. And this goes to the uh, youth home. So um, hopefully we'll have a chance to tell you one more time about it before we have this. And uh, I'm sorry? Oh, flyers are in the back of the room. So if you want to pick one of those flyers up and you ride, uh, you're sur certainly welcome to be a part of this. Uh, today we have Mary Carol Sheffield, coordinator of the Baldwin County Extension Office. Uh, we'd like to present uh, Jody Martin, uh, Jeff Barkins, Bob Banks, Betty Cosgrove, Earl Cosgrove with a silver award for televised work for the Blair Twig Project. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for letting me come and give this award to this team of folks. I want to tell you a little bit about this project. Um, this is the National Association of uh, Natural Resource Extension Professionals a silver award for a television program. Um, and it's being awarded to Jody Martin, Jeff Harkins, Bob Banks, Betty Cosgrove, and Earl Cosgrove. And um, what we did is we submitted a team award for efforts to film an educational program aimed at helping Paul County residents learn more about increasing soil and water conservation through tree planting um, and how to do it right. And soil and water conservation and tree planting are not necessarily the most glamorous topics, but with the help of Jody and Jeff and my team of master gardeners, it makes it a lot more fun and more little fun based on the Blair Witch Project to produce the Blair Twig Project um, to make it more appealing and make it reach people. And it was aired on a local cable access channel that still airs occasionally. Um, the work that Jeff and Jody do with Paulding County 23 is so valuable to our county and it helps um, Paulding County Extension and other departments to really connect with a lot more people so that they know about the services that our county government offers. Um, so it's really helpful to our work and outreach, and so we really appreciate it. And it's really difficult for me to, to explain to you how valuable master gardeners are and the work they do. They're volunteers, they give freely of their time, they're well trained, they're, they have lots of expertise, um, and they have big hearts and curious minds, and a lot of days they have sore backs and dirty knees. 
Um, but I'm real grateful to them. So it's Bob and Betty and Earl and Jackie would come on up. I'd like to present them with their
what would you like to do with uh, this equipment? I have not talked with Michael Justice yet, but I think he can make use of some of this in the course of record. the communities to do this by increasing their jobs tax credits that they were available to give uh, to, to companies located in the community. Um, so if you're not part of a joint development authority, you would have a, a, a fewer dollars to give to those joint tax credits. So being a part of this joint development authority certainly increases our ability to uh, uh, give jobs tax credits through the state. Some of this is the way they could go about dispensing money when they did the tobacco settlement. 
there were um, there was money available. It goes to the state somehow, and that money is then dispensed out to try to help some of our poorer uh, communities and counties with economic development. So where they didn't want to hurt a county like Paulden, they allowed us to be in the Joint Development Authority uh, with a, a say a poor county or a tier one county. Uh, so that kind of helps us and helps you. you oh, I, absolutely. And, and we, you know, we want to help our adjoining counties as well. Uh, I and mean, that's why the state did this. It's, it's, it's crazy, crazy, you know, to foster that cooperation with your counties. I mean, think about the population of these counties. Um, as you read it off, there's a wide range, only being the largest in population. I think herd is only about 11,000 people. Uh, but certainly those folks, you know, travel across county lines, government jurisdictions to shop and work and things like that. So we need to, uh, you know, help each other out. And uh, the tide raises all boats, if you will, in a situation like this. How often do you meet, Robert? Quarterly. You select your own chairman of the group of counties? I haven't been with it um, since I got here, but that's the way it was done in the past. It was a rotating, rotating chairmanship. And I, I, I believe that you do meet uh, down in uh, Carroll County. In Carrollton, at the Burson Center. At the Burson Center. The Burson Center also is kind of unique. Um, it, it is a uh, incubator uh, for new business. So there's a, a lot of good that comes out of there. Uh, a company can only stay there so long and get a start. And then it's for incubation. And then uh, once uh, they grow out of a certain Worth or something like that, uh, they're they're not asked to leave, but they know they have to go out and be in the in the real world. So it, it helps start new businesses. And what I've seen there when I visited, there was pretty neat. It's a it's a great space to start to incubate, and grow, and help those companies get out of out of somebody's mind, if you will, to really production or service, or whatever type of industry it is, and it gives them. Uh, a certain time to get their feet on the ground and, and then launch out into the to the real world, if you will. Did y'all have any questions of our attorney or Thank you very much. Thank you. Number two, discuss action to adopt resolution 15-28, adopting amended and restated plan for the county board of commissioners ACCG defined benefits plan. Uh, Brian. Morning. 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 Good morning. This is a uh, fairly routine item, but as you've seen the backup material, I have a pretty good bit of backup material just because I want you to be aware and informed on this. Um, first of all, ACCG is Association of County Commissioners of the Commission. Right, and uh, we are participants in the ACCG's defined benefit pension plan. And as a routine matter, uh, the IRS. IRS Supreme Court, Georgia law, uh, periodically changes. Uh, the IRS actually requires that every five years you submit an updated plan document. Um, that, that include any of your amendments to the plan. What you have in front of you is our existing document that we already have with a couple of those IRS provisions. It's quite honestly a lot easier to tell you what hasn't changed at all than it is trying to tell you some of the idiosyncrasies about what has changed. Um, but the things that our employees are most uh, aware of, comfortable with, concerned about, quite honestly, uh, the basic plan design is the same uh, in terms of retirement options, retirement age, early retirement options, uh, how the benefit is calculated from your salary, how it's calculated from your years of service, eligibility requirements, those basic things are all the same. Um, there are a couple of provisions in there that uh, some of them actually address what's considered to be a defined contribution plan where an employee contributes. This plan is a defined benefit plan. It doesn't affect those provisions. Um, there's also some provisions about uh, in the event someone is out on military service that um, in the event of death during military service, they're deemed to have reported back to work. This is the family with the benefit, basically. Reported back to work for uh, the death for calculation of uh, the death benefit goes to the family. Um, there's all 
kinds of good stuff in there. If you've got any questions, I'd be glad to try to answer them. And uh, some of the specifics, if, if you need me to wrap up a little more information, I'd be glad to. What they're asking us to do, uh, we have the resolution that authorizes us to adopt this uh, amended and restated plan. We'll submit it back to ACCG. Uh, they will submit it to the IRS on our behalf. There is a limited power of attorney that's included in here that we ask that you approve that as well. And those documents will be submitted to them. Is there is any back and forth that authorizes the chairman to uh, sign to make sure we continue to comply with the IRS requirements on any uh, clarifications that come up as they submit or be? I've seen a map of the counties that are in it. it it's, it's pretty much covers the state. Everybody's not in it, but most, most of them, yeah. Most of them. Yeah. Pretty, pretty routine stuff. Yeah. Right, I was looking down the table here. I don't see any copies. I don't have a copy. Do you have a copy? It's on our it's back. It's on our backup on our iPad. Okay, good. Thank you. I got lots of copies in my office too. It's, it's a nice stack. So there's number three that may go hand in hand with this. Discuss action to authorize the chairman to sign and submit an annual Association County Commissioner toward the ACCG safety discount verification. Uh, Mentioned ACCG. Uh, similarly, we participate in the ACCG Workers' Comp uh, Program and also their Liability and Risk Management Program. Uh, this is a fairly routine item as well, uh, and a good thing. Very, very nice to be able to report to you. Through our participation with these two programs, uh, with the Workers' Comp Program, if you, or with both programs, if you adhere to a series of safety criteria, they grant you discounts on your workers' comp premium, your liability premium. Uh, it is worth noting, we've got a lot of folks in the county who have helped do things to meet these criteria. <coughs> Tara is one of our safety coordinator specialists. Folks in the fire department do a great deal to help with us. Uh, within the departments, they have meetings. We have quarterly safety meetings, distribute materials. Um, also have things like running the NVRs, and background checks. Uh, when we have new hires, um, orienting employees on policy, adhering to workers' comp law, things of that nature. Uh, workers' comp side, this is over $100,000 a year savings by making all these criteria. And uh, so, again, a lot of credit to all the folks who helped do that. There is a limit on the uh, liability premium of $5,000, uh, but we do receive that as well by making the criteria. Ask the uh, sign and submit that, and we will be able to report premium discount. You may have any questions, Brian, on two or three. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, here I'm going to tell you just for my information. Yep. Uh, I actually read over the backup document, and it looks pretty good. I like it. I mean, CCT's done a good job. As far as the defined type of uh, benefit plan, everybody's included. Uh, define the contribution plan we participate in also? We have, we have two different plans. Great question. The plan we were just discussing is our ACCG defined benefit plan. That is county contribution only. Employees do not contribute. Kind of a traditional retirement pension plan. Uh, the calculations based on salary, years of service. Um, several years ago, we implemented uh, a defined contribution plan as well. Employees can to a 457 deferred comp plan, uh, deferred comp from tax, federal and state taxes. And uh, a nice benefit on that is that if somebody puts in 4% of their base salary, we do a county match of 2%, and that goes to what's called a 401A account. Uh, just out of curiosity, I just wonder if you know a percentage of the employees of the county that actually participate in the final contribution. I think it is, I will say, an estimate of about 550 out of 800. So if you do just to participate in, in that and you go to do your income tax, then you, you're not taxed on that part that you put into the. Right, let's well, say. You said you're only taxed when you take the benefit out, when, when you draw it out, either then or later. It's the, the tax is the deferred concept of it. Um, have an employee 
that's eight thousand dollars a year into that account. And the year that that box loan amount, that two thousand dollars is deducted from that. It's not taxable and not taxable until the point that they actually make a distribution. That's good, your friend. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's great. Uh, connection of all the plans, several options there. And you, you've been doing this how long now? Uh, in your what year? Sixteenth year this week. Actually. He started when he was about ten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I poked him out playing basketball last night, and I'm definitely not feeling like it was anywhere near the so. uh, Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, that's the conclusion of a regular business session. We do have an executive session went into uh, for land acquisition, personnel, and litigation. Uh, before I go into a motion here a second to do that, we usually because sometimes that gets lengthy, uh, less public participation on non-agenda items. These are people who call in and got signed up to be on the agenda. Uh, so if, if it's okay with the board, we'll move forward and uh, hear uh, from our public. Uh, we have Royce Parks uh, coming to talk to us about airport. <coughs> Good morning, Commission Chairman and Commissioner. Good morning. Red start the clock. On March the 16th, 1999, the voters of Paulding County had two referendums to vote on. 1999 referendum question one. Shall the Board of Commissioners of Paulding County be authorized to plan for the future transportation needs of residents of Paulding County? through the acquisition of land for the construction of the General Aviation Airport and shall there be issued three million dollars of Pauline County Georgia general obligation bonds for such purpose. The vote was yes, 907, no, 1628. After 79% of the voters said no, the Industrial Building Authority and the Airport Authority still moved forward to purchase land and build the General Aviation Airport. There was no further citizen participation in the authority's decision to move forward. The Industrial Building Authority made a $4 million interest-free loan to the Industrial Building Authority, to the Airport Authority to purchase land. Today, the Airport Authority and the Industrial Building Authority, again, without the vote of the people, want to bring commercialization to the airport. Since 1999, the voice and input of the people have not been listened to in Pauline County. 1999 referendum question two shall the board of commissioners of Pauline County be authorized to plan for the future drinking water needs of residents of Pauline County through the acquisition of land to be used as a future water reservoir site and shall there be issued three million dollars of Pauline County general obligation bonds for such purpose the vote was yes 1859 no 676 Commissioners, for 16 years, if anyone questioned the need for a reservoir, the response has been, but the people voted for it. Commissioners, the it that the people voted for was $3 million in general obligation bonds for acquisition of land, period. Now, after 16 years, business as usual has resulted in no public input or explanation of how much debt could actually end up on the backs of the taxpayers for the cost of Richland Creek Reservoir. It has yet to be addressed. This will be the most monumental debt ever to be placed on the taxpayers of Paulding County. In 1999, the people were told if they voted yes on both referendums, their taxes would go up $8 per $100,000 house for the next 17 years. Information I received on August the 19th, 2015 from Mark Lethbridge, the senior client manager with Brown and Carwell, was the anticipated cost of the reservoir is $168,703,782 and does not include the design and installation of the distribution pipeline and remote pump station. Commissioners, if the debt of $200 million gets placed on the Pauline County, 
placed on the taxpayers of Pauline County, the taxes on a $150,000 house will go up approximately $150 plus per year for 20 years. You will have to increase the county M and O millage rate by 30% or more. It is time to stop, give citizens transparency, honesty about what the debt of a commercial airport unknown and a reservoir two to three hundred million will do to the people of the county, their lifestyles and pocketbooks. I ask that you put both of these projects on a referendum with true total cost and let the voters decide. This lectern will go, grow quieter if you let the people have a choice. Let the people speak and listen to what they say. They put you where you are sitting today. It's like a good friend of mine says, it's about people, not politics. Thank you. out before. Uh, Mr. Sparks is a Douglas County voter. Uh, he he <coughs> the courtesy because he does uh, own land and buildings here. But as far as uh, water resource uh, folks, we don't have a choice. Uh, we're, we're facing, uh, I don't know if you remember the drive of 07, uh, but landscapers were out of business. Car washes were out of business. You couldn't water your lawn, you couldn't water your gardens, uh, you couldn't wash your car, you couldn't do anything you wanted to do. You were on restriction. Now building a, a reservoir is a very, very difficult task. And we've only spent 16 years studying this, putting information out to you so that you would have it. Uh, there's web pages available, there's information available. Uh, this was something that began to what we saw in uh, even as early as 1999 that we needed a source for water. Uh, you, you don't have an interstate highway and you don't have a river. So building a reservoir is one of the most unique things you could do uh, to uh, help us move into the future. And what we're doing here today is not for me, is not for most of the ones in this room, but it's generations that come uh, after that, future generations will thank us uh, for building this reservoir and having the source for water. Uh, I'll move on to our second uh, guest, Crisco uh, Saltes, Amendment to Alcohol Pouring License. And did I get your name correct? It, it's actually Desatel. It's your place. It's a what? Desatel. Uh, it's French. <laughs> it's French. That's the explanation. Um, thank, you. thank you so much for giving me time. Um, you have five minutes. It. Oh, thank you. I appreciate uh, Commissioner Carmichael for inviting me to come. Um, my family has lived here in Paulding County for over 20 years, and I'm here today to propose an amendment to the current Paulding County alcohol ordinances, uh, specifically the retail consumption on premise and the ancillary wine tasting permit. As Pawnee County continues to evolve from what has always been to me a sleepy rural community to a um, more <coughs> desirable suburban community, we need to update our ordinances to keep up with the surrounding cities and counties. And to attract new residents and service the current ones, Pawnee County needs um, to have new and unique businesses to entice consumers to spend their time and money in our county rather than going out to um, other locations and other uh, communities. M uh, my request is to revise the current pouring license to allow for a specialty wine and beer shop that would allow them to pour two ounce samples of wine and craft beer to legal drinking age customers without requiring food sales or limiting the number of days in which a, a pouring uh, the establishment may pour these samples of wine and beer. In addition, the shop may also condu conduct educational um, classes that can include tasting as part of the educational experience. This ordinance is similar to pouring permits in Cobb and DeKalb counties and in the cities of Ackworth, Marietta, and Roswell. The concept of try before you buy is not new. 
um, I've seen firsthand on how this similar business model has succeeded in our surrounding communities and the popularity of this model results in a positive experience for the customer and a profitable business for the community. With the passing of this amendment, specialty line of beer shops will have flexibility not allowed in supermarkets or package stores. And I appreciate your consideration on this matter and I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, we, we have distilleries, but you just don't know where they are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not talking about making anything. We're just wanting to pour samples. Um, you know, just, just basically, um, we find that that helps uh, the consumer make a better purchase decision to find something that they, that they like. I think you need to just refer to this as the recipe. The recipe? Yeah, the recipe. Okay. <laughs> All right. You said there were several other communities that already do this. Yes, sir. Who are some of those? Um, in Marietta, there um, is a, a small wine shop called Uncorked, and they are right off of Due West, Ackward Due West, and Kennesaw Due West. They're right in that corner. Um, I actually do uh, wine tastings there currently, and um, the I guess the community has embraced this business. We've seen, they have a club membership. We've seen that club membership triple in the time that we've opened in three years. And um, the popularity, the, the enthusiasm of all of our customers has kind of prompted people to say, why don't we have something like that in Paulding County? There's a lot of Paulding County residents who cross the line, go to that store, and they spend their money there. So. I'm being entrepreneurial and thinking, well, I could open up one of those if I just have the um, ordinance in, or in order to do that. And Major LaHome has given us a lot of information and done research on how it would affect Paulding County. We appreciate that. Uh, Chris, appreciate your being here. And you would locate that around the Seven Hills area? Yes, that's the property in which I'm looking at. I've spoken with the um, property management, which is uh, public's supermarket actually owns that uh, land there or that um, building and um, they're fully behind me in supporting it so I don't find any issues in that area. Okay, well, um, any other questions? Have you had any discussion with the uh, people who live in that community? Have you went to any homeowners association or you just talk with publics at this point about having I spoke with Publix, and like I said, I, I know a lot of people who live in that area. Um, I've spoken with them. I've not actually um, actually done like a community reach. Um, I know with Seven Hills, they have a very uh, active community. So um, my next step would be to approach them. I know that they have uh, their own little public, like private clubs that they purchase wine for and everything. So I know that they're involved with that, but. I, I know that there's not any other business like that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I appreciate you. Thank you very Thank much. You. That, that's not your time, but we asked you a lot of questions. I oh. <laughs> okay. It um, is your time, but we interrupt you with questions. Okay. I, I don't know if there's any follow up you want. Uh, no, I'm happy to answer questions, and if y'all don't have any other questions, I'll, I guess I anticipate the decision. Um, I also have some, I don't think this is, I can take it. Okay. I have what yeah I have what is actually um, on the books for the, the ancillary pouring license with our uh, tasting license which is limited and the uh, retail consumption and then I have my proposal behind it. Okay. Okay. We'll take a look at that. All right. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. it. Uh, we have uh, Mr. Chairman Jerry Sharon calling Water Source and Cobb County Water Authority. Good morning, gentlemen. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Seven Hills and Bentwater are routinely known throughout this region as the drinking is crowd in Georgia, so I don't think I'm in trouble with that. Uh, last week I spent every single day in this building trying to get uh, a certificate of occupancy for a couple who are retired and moving here from Missouri. And I want to take just a moment to thank some of the people I talked to last week when I was here because uh, these people were in a moving truck, and, and it was very possible they were going to have to spend the weekend in a hotel or in a moving truck. And, and I know I'm going to forget some people, but I know Scott Green, Lori Ashmore, Ann Littman, Bruce Coyle, Steve Turner, Chris Robinson, Janet Brown, Don Pilgrim, all of these people and more helped to make this happen. I also called on Commissioner Crow 
and Chairman Alston to help when it looked like maybe we were getting up against the deadline. And, um, and I really, really appreciate you guys helping uh, get these people a CO so they could move into their house. And during the course of the conversation with uh, Chairman Austin, he was actually in the car at the time, we got to talking about the reservoir and its history. And um, it occurred to me at that time that you guys are at a distinct disadvantage over any commission we've had ever. There are no holdovers from previous administrations on, on this board up here. So that means you're at a disadvantage when it comes to the history of things like the reservoir. One of the things you would know had you been uh, in a, on a previous administration, you would know that things like delaying getting uh, permits so that you could go a year and three months from now and have an election basically could end getting your permit. Uh, if, if you get the public to get involved and, and in fighting over whether we build or don't build a reservoir right now when you've already got your draft permit and you're going towards the you're going towards the end zone gentlemen and if, if you don't push this ball over the end zone line right now your grandchildren will suffer if this reservoir isn't built so i thought i'd come here today and i thought that i would give you guys the briefest of history on the reservoir and, and it actually goes back uh, even beyond the Caruth administration it goes back at least to the Hollis administration, and I remember the Helms administration talking about this thing. At that time, they talked about damming the pumpkin vine and raccoon creek. And of course, you all know that the three things you have to have to have industry come into your county are transportation, sewer, and water. We have your transportation because you have the rail. We have a four-lane road, 278, which goes to a rail yard, which goes to the port of Savannah. Your four-lane road on 278 goes out to, to US 27, and takes goods and services all the way up and down the East Coast on 27. Chairman Helms began the efforts to get countywide sewer. And, and our county sewer system continues to expand through, through every administration since then. In the meantime, many of you may not know this, you weren't, you weren't in, as involved as a lot of people were back when we were all in the trenches trying to bring little things like Chick-fil-A here. I was actually part of that effort. Uh, Red Lobster was coming. And then they backed out at the last second because they didn't know we didn't serve alcohol. But Tip Top Poultry identified this county. They wanted to come here. Of all the counties in the world, they wanted to come here. And, and we actually sent them away. You cannot come here. We don't have the water. We don't have the water for you. But we'll hook you up with Polk County. So how many thousands of jobs have been out in Polk County because we didn't have the water? You can't count on Cobb County's water source if you're trying to bring in industry, you've got to have your own. So going back to the Hollis administration, the, uh, there, were, there were people who were fighting this, and they were basically environmentalists, but I think that we've overcome a lot to get where Chairman Austin and this commission have us right now. In 1999, the voters approved a bond issue to buy the land. Uh, Chairman Carruth at that time set forth a plan to move forward for a reservoir. After that, uh, our administration purchased the land and pushed, pushed the application process forward. As Chairman Austin can tell you, this is not an easy process. And there, there are so many places along the way that you can get sidetracked. Uh, I, I spoke to Harold Reheis at one time. He was the director of EPD. Most people up here don't know this. He picked our site. We didn't pick it. Our consultants went to him and said, where do you think we'll get environmental approval? Um, Along the same time, Cobb Area Water Authority was developing two reservoirs at the same time. Hickory Log Creek, which is the one they built, and another one, I, I don't remember the name of it, was up near Altoona. And they were trying to get us to commit to buying a certain amount of water through a certain number of years. If, if you will, I need some clarification on that because I, I, I need to ask you, there, there was a contract and uh, I believe it was offered. Uh, maybe uh, you didn't sign it for one reason or another. And go ahead and explain sure. to me, since I asked the question, about how that how that took place. This was a very tough time at Paul, and this was in 01 and 02. And um, remember, since 1951, when Cobb Marietta Water Authority first went into business, Paulding County started buying water 20 years later, in the late 60s and early 70s. And um, 
we had different contracts and different unsigned contracts over those years to try to, to make sure we had the water flowing into Pauly. They're trying to build two reservoirs. To build a reservoir, the first thing you have to show the federal government is a need. To show need, they couldn't do it. They had Lake Altoona, they had water sources all over the place, so they didn't have the need, they didn't have the justification, and Cherokee County didn't, and Canton, the city of Canton didn't have the need either to build a reservoir, by the way, Go to that reservoir sometimes, it's very similar to ours. So they, they're looking and they're reaching out for other communities and counties and they're saying, hey, would you sign on and say you'll buy water through X date? That'll give us the need we need, okay? In the meantime, we're trying to get our reservoir permit in. I felt like as my job and our commission's job wasn't to take care of the residents of Canton and Cherokee County. Uh, I, don't, I don't think it's your jobs up there to take care of the residents of Cobb County or Polk or any of the surrounding counties. I think it's your job to take care of our citizens. So we actually use that as a negotiating ploy. We try to find the right number and the right number of years that we would say we'll purchase water from you to not hinder the moving forward of our, of our permit application. This is really important at this point because what we wanted as much as anything was a seat at the table on the Cotton Area Water Authority. You have no idea how important that was. And what it did in 2007 may have saved us even, I mean, what Chairman Austin talked about was the tip of the iceberg. I'd be happy to expound on 07 also, but, but um, we got that seat on the board. And that gave us a voice in the future of water distribution in this part of the state. We had never had that. We had, that was, that was a lot of bloodshed over getting that seat. And, and I understand Chairman Austin is Chairman-elect, is that right, or the Vice President or Vice Chairman? Or Vice Chairman. Vice Chairman. So um, that, that gives this county some real horsepower when it comes to deciding water issues in this area. Um, do I, can I take a moment to tell you about 07? Because I think... I, I need to hear about that, but uh, the selection, if we went back and I asked you why you selected the site you did, and you got Harold Reheis, who's now in private business. Right. Um, but when he sort of put a pin down, from what I understood, and I wasn't there, said that this would this would be the right place. Uh, we were already in water wars with Alabama and Florida, and so uh, when Johnny Hems and those guys could have found a wish they would or yeah. uh, uh, funky micro. We can't do that. Now. That's so exactly. We had to build an on-site. <laughs> if you would, don't mind addressing that. Yeah, and, and that actually will dovetail into the 07 discussion. Uh, the off-site reservoir concept. Not only did Harold Reed I say this is your best site. He told me in the hallway of the Capitol. The decision had been made prior to my term. I just ran into it a year or two later. later. He told me in the hallway of the Capitol one time. He said, "I picked Richmond Creek Reservoir site for you guys. It's the only site." To put it in layman's terms, you have a river with too much water in it called the Etowa. You have a hole that's empty with a part-time running stream called Richland Creek. I've been there when there was no water going through it. In order to get around the whole snail darter issue, you know, our, our, our favorite resident of Paulding County, the Etowa and the Cherokee darter, they had to find a place where there are no snail darters. Richland Creek had no snail darters. Then we got into snail darter habitat. Well, maybe there will be snail darters in 50 or 100 years there because there's the right habitat. So finally, Rehi said, Richland Creek is your only place. He then went and he, he, backed, he backed our reservoir, which was critical. Without EPD support, you don't build a reservoir. The feds aren't going to allow it. Um, the water wars. The water wars began in 1989 when the talk of the Harrelson County Reservoir came out. And the water wars, th this is where the 07 discussion comes in. The water wars peaked in 07 during that terrible drought. In 2007 we had a monumental drought and um, Florida and Alabama were trying to take us to the Supreme Court to shut off North Georgia from getting any water out of Altoona or Lake Lanier. I mean, I want you to understand, they really, really were trying to do that. And we were blocking them at every every step of the way. We couldn't, we, we knew that if it got to Supreme Court, it was dicey. We might lose and I don't know what we would have done. Um, so we then had Altoona basically dry. 
And we were all getting our water kind of on a wing of prayer. And I got a phone call when I was in my car from Glenn Page. And Glenn Page is the director of the Cobb Mary Oil Authority. And Glenn Page says to me, I'm calling you first, Mr. Chairman. You sit on our board. He said, this is, this is a very important phone call. And I said, okay, Mr. Page. And he said, we don't know what's about to happen with water. He said, but I want you to know that everyone's water is in peril. And I said, well, Glenn, what does that mean? And he said, I'm very concerned that if this thing takes one more step and it gets to the Supreme Court, they may shut us all down because Lake Altoona wasn't originally planned to be a drinking impoundment. And so I said, Glenn, are you telling me that Pauline County may not get any water? And he said, I'm not telling you that. I have, we have a contract with you to provide you with water. He said, but I'm also not telling you that we're going to provide you with water. And so I'm driving, I'm driving back to my office at that moment with my heart racing. Imagine what happens if they shut the water off. And it occurred to me, we're at the end of the water line. I mean, Cobb County's water line, it, it comes to Paulding County. It doesn't go beyond that. So if it were us, if it were y'all, and you were providing water to Harrelson County, and our water supply was dwindling to nearly nothing, would you make the decision to give Harrelson County our last drop of drinking water, or would you take care of Paulding County residents? I mean, I don't think I need an answer to that question. But that's what, that's what I thought we were against. And, and I don't know that we would have gotten that call without that seat. Um, this water discussion went beyond that. This water discussion, literally, Paulding County was mentioned in the White House. I know that sounds grandiose, but this is a story Senator Isaacson told me. And then I'll be done, I promise. He said, Jerry, I was in a meeting in the White House with all of our elected representatives and senators from Georgia and all of the elected representatives and senators from Alabama. And he said, the president was coming into the room, and we were all yelling at each other. They were yelling, you can't stop the water from coming downstream. We were yelling, you can't turn Atlanta off the water. And he said it was, it was, he said it was just total chaos in that room. And the president of the United States comes in the room, and he said, okay, tell me what this is all about. And basically, Alabama went through their argument, Georgia went through their argument, and Senator Isaacson looked at the president of the United States and said, Mr. President, we have a county in Metro Atlanta that has just instituted what I believe are the toughest watering restrictions, certainly east of the Mississippi and probably in the United States. It's Paulding County, Georgia. People are putting buckets in their shower to catch the overflow to, walk, to give their, their pets water. He said, if you do what the state of Alabama wants you to do, you will be turning the water off to the biggest city in the southeast. And he told me this story. He said, the President of the United States looked at everybody at the table and he said, I'm leaving. Y'all better work this out. But if you think I'm shutting the spigot off to the city of Atlanta, you're crazy. So y'all work this out. And they did. Pauline County got mentioned, like I said, somewhat grandiosely, in, in the White House in, an, in a discussion with the President of the United States. Because we have a contract doesn't mean we always have water. Okay? We have a contract with Cobb Area Water Authority. If we don't build this reservoir, or if we delay it long enough for the environmentalists to stop it, and it doesn't get built, that is, that is on you guys. And, and as a citizen of this county, and as a guy who went through the war and, and has sat up there and, and had citizens wishing to speak and, and beating me up like you guys get routinely, I'd like to ask you guys, I mean, quite honestly, I'm going to put you right on the spot. Is there any one of you five commissioners right now that is unwilling to say you're 100% in support of the reservoir? I mean, Commissioner Crow, it's in your district. Are you 100% in support of it? At this point, the citizen voted on it. It's my job to be their voice. Am I open for discussion as we're having now? I certainly am. While asking this question, to me, where does Polk County get their water from? That's a, that's a great question. Every county that surrounds Paulding has a water source. Every single county, we don't. But every county in, that touches our county has a water source. Let's see, Bartow has Lake Altoona. Um, Cobb has Lake Altoona. Douglas County has a Dog River Reservoir and the Chattahoochee River. Carroll County has the Chattahoochee River, uh, River. Harrelson County has the Little Tallapoosa and the Tallapoosa River. And Polk County has, is in a 
great position. They have a unique set of springs on the western end of that county. They're just south of K Springs, going down towards Cedar Town. There's a bunch of them. They have one spring called Big Spring, I think. It was named by some Indians back in the 1800s. It produces 4 million gallons of water a day, all by itself, that one spring. They have other springs, so they get their water from there. And by the way, history lesson number two, did you all know that Pauline County buys water from Polk County? We did not our water system, but residents of Paulding County buy water from the Polk County water system. So that that's where everyone gets their water. Now we're not allowed to have any. I mean, is that is that's that's what the discussion is, whether we should have a reservoir or not. I don't think that's a that's a valid discussion for this time. I mean I just don't. So I, I hope you guys will move forward. Um, is there unanimity on the board? Are you all in support of a reservoir? Yes, we are. At this point, I think we are. And I think what Mr. Sparks has brought up, did the citizens get all the information they needed, and are they aware of the fact that their taxes may go up? What, what are they aware of or not? And I believe that in the future, for my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren, we need more resources. We need to make sure we've got them. And it's my job at this time, I've heard the citizens when they vote, they vote for the water. I will say this on that issue. When I went to Washington multiple times between 2001 and 2008 and met with congressmen and senators to get money, which we did get for the reservoir, millions of dollars, um, it never was brought to my attention or never did they tell me no, that this, the federal government wouldn't help us. During the Purdue administration, Governor Purdue administration and during Governor Barnes's administration, there was always a willingness to help from the state. I think that um, you guys have done a pretty good job of setting up strategic alliances like this Joint Development Authority that was started, you know, about 10 or 15 years ago, and it continues to grow. I remember when, when it was first set up, it was like four counties, and when I saw this thing, I was like, man, that's great. We'll continue to, to develop those relationships at the state and the federal government, and and I think that. I believe that number that the gentleman from Douglas County had. Um, I believe the 160 plus million dollars. There may be ways to, to make it less. I don't think delaying building the reservoir for what would be, this is August, so you would have your referendum to get the most voters. It'd have to be in November of next year. I don't think that your number of 168 million will go down by delaying until next November. Um, if you get your permit, you can start construction very quickly. I was on the Common Area Water Authority when they got the permit, and I was on there when they started construction with Canton on um, Hickory Log Creek. And it was like that. What did Hickory Log Creek cost? Do you know have any idea? I believe it was 121, but and that, that's going from memory. That, that, come on, that was 2006 or seven, but. Using the 121, I remember they spent like 13 or 14 million on land acquisition. Well, we bought that land out there for two million and some change. So we have that. Could you imagine what that land would cost today? And I will say this also: you need to recognize the citizens in that area. They didn't try to hold us up. The citizens that were selling us land did not try to, to rape this county and get more money. They took our appraisals, and almost every one of them accepted our appraisal and took the money. They were excited because most of them were saying, man, we're finally getting a reservoir. When you get a guy who's willing to sell you land to a government at what, I, what you ask him to give you, ask him to take, you've got, you've got buy-in from that part of the community. So, you know, whatever the right number is today, I don't know. I believe the, the gentleman from Douglas County's number of 168, it may be right. That may not include land acquisition or it may include it, I don't know. Um, it was it was really a unique experience to watch that dam go up and to watch that reservoir starting pounding water. It really was. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry I took so long, but that was thank you. Good. Thank you. Uh, and Kelly, uh, Unstock, you remarked that y'all come to the lectern, and uh, again, what we're what we're faced with is guesswork on uh, what a pipeline's going to cost, what a pump station's going to cost. And I've heard people say that, well, maybe we want to impound the water 
and then let the Cotton Area Water Authority withdraw it, uh, treat it, and then sell it back to us. Uh, in my opinion, uh, as a business manager, that takes us out of control of our own water. So, uh, you know, the whole time I looked at this, I, I, I thought we need to own our own water source. We need to own our own pump station and water filtration. Uh, Kelly, if you'll take just a few minutes and update us. Yes, thank you, thank you, Chairman. Um, I, I appreciate the interest in, in the reservoir and just wanted to clarify a couple of things that were said today. Um, first of all, the uh, information provided to Mr. Sparks, it was, it was clearly identified that those numbers are in progress. We are 60% uh, with the design of the plant right now, and we're at 100% on the reservoir. We've got uh, the CMR team and the designer of the reservoir currently revising their cost estimates. So when you hear that number, please recognize that that is, that is in flux. We, within the next 30 days, should have a, a firmer number. The other thing that, that I wanted to just point out is that water and sewer is an enterprise fund. It's a revenue fund. You do not fund these projects with taxes. These projects get funded by ratepayers, the, the cost of water and sewer service. So for example, when you have your bill, you're, you're, you pay for the usage of the water. That is that money that goes, that the, that the customers pay actually go to fund this. These projects get funded through bonds, totally independent from county taxes. Uh, not at all related to millage rates. It's all based on consumption. So a homeowner that uses 10,000 gallons of water a month pays a higher amount than a homeowner that uses 3,000 gallons per month, for example. Now it's important to point out as a wholesale customer to Cobb County Marietta Water Authority, you pay a wholesale rate. You pay a higher rate than the cost of actually producing the water. So the idea of the Richmond Creek Reservoir is you will now own the facility and the ability to produce your own water. So you can produce water at a much lower cost than what you are paying Cobb Marietta right now. So I know there's a lot of discussion about numbers. We're in the process of pulling that together and showing a financial plan to show it is a very large number, 168 or more. Um, however, that doesn't mean that all of a sudden there's going to be a tax bill because it's a revenue bill. And it doesn't necessarily mean that your rates are going to go up uh, astronomical to be able to pay for this. Um, we have said all along that there likely will be a rate increase. However, you are seeing a rate increase every year, essentially, from, from Cobb Marietta. So when you compare what has happened historically with what we paid to Cobb Marietta and what is projected to take place in the future, compared to developing uh, this water supply, long term, there is a cost savings for the county. And we'd like the ability to come back to the board and brief you on that, show the financial model, show the updated costs, so that everybody completely understands how this reservoir gets paid for over the long term and the long term economic benefit that this project actually has for the county. And, and, and what we're looking at is uh, we're paying for a finished product. Uh, as Kelly said, when we receive that water, it's a finished product. All we have to do is distribute. Uh, now we, we will actually be in the process of treating uh, this water. So, uh, Ralph, tell us just for uh, uh, rounding off numbers, you gave me a figure of about 150 million uh, when the day is over. And 25 years from now, we would have paid Kyle Marietta $150 million and still not own our water source. Or we could build Richland Creek Reservoir and uh, have $150 million in the reservoir and own it. Uh, as they talked about, one, one of the things I do on Cobb Marietta, being the finance chair and vice chair, is very involved in uh, the uh, CIP. And what we've done there is capital improvement plan, uh, which allows you to take pipe that's been in the ground 50 years and replace it. So. Uh, a lot of the rate increases that we have to pass along to Alton County is to help pay for that infrastructure. And uh, believe me, 50 years is a long period of time. You know, James Steele's here, he can tell you, uh, they usually don't last that long. But that's part of what we're having to pay for here in rate increases is the old pipe they have in the ground. Well, you're faced with another problem. If you look at the city of Atlanta, they've never replaced their pipe. So you go down Peachtree Street, you go down another street, 
and it is closed off for a week because they're trying to replace pipe that they never looked at. So what we've done is uh, when you hear that I go to a uh, Cobb Marietta and we go to the uh, Waterworks Convention, we're going there to see equipment. For instance, what we just implemented uh, was a piece of equipment that goes through pipe and takes a picture and lets you know if you possibly have a break that's fixing to happen, a piece of pipe that's about to deteriorate and avoid a major problem like the siege of line hands. Uh, we're able to locate this pipe, we're able to take sections of it and, and improve it. So what you're paying for right now is improvements that are happening with Cobb Marietta, and I'm 100% for that because if we didn't, then one of the pipes that may break the next time may be the main pipe coming into Baldwin County. But Mark, I think you had something you wanted to add. Just, just one last point regarding the permit, which we should be getting in shortly. That permit's good for five years. And then you could, if you don't use it within five years, you can get a waiver for maybe five more years. It used to last forever, but they don't do that anymore. And the point is, since it took you 16 years to get this one, if this one goes away and you try to revisit the core in 2032 or 2042, you've had another 20 years trying to get another permit if they give you one. You could be looking at 2050, 2060, 2070 before you ever got a core or four permit again. So keep that in mind, the money situation is important, but the regulatory process that has already been taking place, that might start over again in 2040. So then you're looking at 2070, 2075, and then look at the cost of that reservoir in the year 2075 if you start looking at inflation over that period of time. So the decision <laughs> here about too is endangered species. Uh, you wouldn't believe, uh, if you had to be on these calls I'm on, I, I'm just like holding my head, thinking how in the world could they be worried about an Indiana long year back? But if we have delayed our permit probably four or five months, because they've now put the Indiana bat on an endangered species list. So uh, we had to go out, uh, Mr. Poundell was there uh, with his uh, son, and uh, he watched them catch bats. We didn't catch an Indiana bat, but we had to prove they wouldn't be on our property. Now, can you imagine if we waited another five or 10 years or even longer, how many more endangered species after we've already studied all the darters in the world with now it's bats and who knows what would be next. And they literally hold up an entire project before you get this done. So uh, I, I wish we had done this five years ago. I wish we had it done, but we have worked as hard as we could to get this permit. And it, it is, uh, I think the last email I got, we're within a few days of receiving the written final permit because we already have the drought and I sign it, send it back down, they sign it, send it back up to us and we're done. Well in closing as, as Mr. Sparks know he sent me an email and we got him all the information. I'm sorry for the two day delay. We had to get all the numbers together for you. But as we're moving forward as I've talked to all the commissioners, if you have a question, if you don't know the difference between a general fund and an enterprise fund, we will sit down with you and educate you every step of the way as we have done since day one since we've been on board and that will not change. Send the emails, make the comments, ask the questions, and we will make sure as best we can that everybody is educated on this process. Thanks. Yeah, I know I know all the commissioners appreciate, as I do, uh, Chairman Chair coming and, and giving us that history and education. Um, I really needed that. I, I appreciate putting it all together there. Also, uh, well, Kelly and Mark already sat down. I think it'd be uh, interesting if you reviews it's uh, Chairman Chair also mentioned that we uh, purchase water from Polk County or some individuals do. Uh, after we have the Richland Creek Reservoir, a revenue source of the county could be selling water, although the adjoining counties, as you mentioned, have water sources, but if they're not sufficient at that time, then we could actually market our water and, and, and get revenue from that. Chairman, can I make a comment? Chairman Crow and I, thanks to Roy Sparks, mm -hmm. had an opportunity to sit down with Lynn Page. I had a great conversation with him. But one thing he said that really, really made me think was this comment. He said, you know, I hate to lose you as a customer, but I think you're doing the right thing, and I think you should do uh, move forward on your own reservoir. 
He said, let me explain something to you. He said, if you decide not to build the reservoir and you stay with Kyle Marietta, I have no problem with that. He said, but Pauley County's infrastructure is not good. It needs to be replaced. You need more infrastructure. It needs to expand. He said, we're talking about millions. He said, I promise you, Kyle Marietta is not going to pay for that. So that means Pauley County residents will pay for it. So it looks like either way, we've got something that's going to cost us money. Do you want to own it or do you want to rent it? We, uh, we uh, did go into executive session and it, it could be lengthy. Uh, do I hear a motion to go into executive session for land acquisition personnel litigation? Motion to go into executive session. Second. Motion second. Any uh, discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. That's a 5 0 vote. Uh, we will uh, return as soon as we're back in session. Uh, no action, official action was taken in closed session. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. All in favor say aye. Aye. Oh, no, second. 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 Sorry, second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 And there will be no two o'clock planning. Oh, no two o'clock planning.